Wild, all right. So, um, yeah, let's check. Change this up. I mean, yeah, it seems to just work. Upcoming. Here's all, look at that. <coughs> OBS from, uh, YouTube from OBS. Very smooth. And I've got a light, better lighting, it's also daylight, but you know, it can be inconsistent, doesn't matter. All right, what's going on today? What's going on today? So, um, GitHub APL Utils. So, some, what's the context here? What are we doing? Um, basically, uh, a little while ago, I was scouring the scouring, uh, lurking, <laughs> lurking in the APL farm, Discord, uh, APL channel. And it's often brought up, um, and it makes a lot of sense that like part of APL's want of a better phrase, lack of appeal, um, is the tooling. Um, it's not that necessarily, especially dialogue, but other APLs or array languages as well don't have tools to do things it's more like yeah you can do what you want but sometimes it's not either very obvious to know where to look to find something or you find something that seems to almost do what you want but it's hard to read through the docs and find you know the exact uh oh that's a good point uh how much worse is that gonna be right excuse me one moment um <clears throat> I forgot to plug in Ethernet and I'm worried that's going to mess up the stream, so I'll be right back. All right, so network cable plugged in now. Let's have a blueberry. Anyway, yeah, so APL tools <coughs> and um, yeah, a couple of like very specific examples came up. One in the uh, APL farm, which I thought, well, let's give it a go. And another with um, someone I started working with recently who was trying to read some tabular data from a file. But we're going to start with um, just one, um, the HTML tables idea, see how far we get in about an hour. And, um, and then hopefully we'll publish the tool. So this APL utils GitHub organization we created quite a long time ago when um, some, you know, career APLers were asking like, is there a place, <clears throat> is there a place where I can just go and, um, publish, you know, I've, I've made tools, they said, these people have made tools throughout their lifetime, some of them quite useful, there's not really a great central place to put those sorts of things. So I made this group, nothing really came of it at that time, maybe it will again um, and we can gather some sort of community examples there are other things there's like the Tatan repository which is sort of in development at the moment so this is like an idea for a package manager for um, APL for dialog APL at least uh, and there's also Carlisle groups dado which looks really excellent the only problem is um, is basically heavily integrated with GitHub. So every, although <laughs> it's largely the fact it's gonna be the case, majority of Tatan packages are probably going to be on GitHub. The fact that Dado's whole API like means that you have to use it is part of the reason why I think Dialog itself can't ad adopt it officially. Um, so we're looking at Tatan. Uh, 
these tools, one of which I'm going to start working on in a moment, the HTML tables one, I don't know if they're substantial enough um, that you'd want them as Tatan repositories. Maybe if they get a bit bigger, maybe if people do start relying on them, then it's worth doing that. Um, and as far as I can tell, it looks like turning it into a Tatan repository is probably just uh, add some config and whatever. But for now, I'm just going to make um, the tool as um, I think HTML table is just going to be a namespace or maybe even a single function. Or at least the API will be a single function that you call. And yeah, the suggestion was, and I don't know what other language or tool the person who made this comment said, but you basically give um, a URL and it imports all the HTML tables there. So unlike Friday stream, where I sort of ham fisted my way through something that um, had clearly gone out of my brain uh, in the time since I last did any of that sort of work, uh, I have actually pre prepared all this code and I'm just going to start again more or less from scratch, but with the knowledge that if I get a bit flustered, I can just go and look at what I did before when I got the thing working. So it's a tool. Yeah, you provide a URL and it gives you HTML tables. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is clone this. Clone this repo. Pop it in there. Okay, so now I've got that and what I can do from dialogue is to create a link between, um, well, let's make it a namespace. Doesn't actually matter what, but it's just in case I want to put random stuff in the root and not accidentally fill up the repo with rubbish. And it's my GitHub stuff and it's called HTML tables. So, There's nothing in there at the minute. I wonder how annoying the um, if you do end up watching this, <clears throat> if any if any if anyone does end up watching this, can you just give me a poke in the chat? Maybe I should have just watched the last one. I'll watch it again. How annoying is the <laughs> how annoying is the typing? Because I imagine it's very annoying. And possibly me eating and drinking as well, but whatever. It's my stream, not yours. Right. So, um, yep. What we're going to do is we're going to need a function to fetch a URL. Is a URL and it's a simple char vec. Yeah, I started wondering about doing like a little little type notation. I think there are some defens that have something like this. Oh, good day, Jeff. Um, yeah, just give us, a, if you're watching, Jeff, give us a, a little message whether the typing is really annoying or whether it's not actually that bad when, I, when I'm like, okay, well, not really typing there, but, oh, you know, I'm going to be typing. Um, if you want to know what I'm doing, I'm writing a tool which you give it a URL and it's going to import the data inside any HTML tables in there as a, a nested matrix in the APL workspace. So what we're going to return is also so simple. We can say depth one char vec. Is that better? Is that more notational or is that worse? You'd rather it just say the word simple char vec, right? Um, web page. Cool. Thanks for letting us know. So yeah, we're going to grab stuff from the internet. And to do that, we're going to use HTTP command. So this is where technically oh, I should do, I should evolve something. I mean, hmm. I don't think it's been officially published here. No. And if you go to test um, HTTP command, 
is a dialogue utility to fetch data from the internet. And it's on to turn here, but the test server can be completely reset at any time. So I'm reluctant to depend on it that way right now. In fact, I won't. What I'm gonna do is have a APL could have like a namespace with dependencies and each one's just an array. You'd rather it be like a JSON thing, wouldn't you? So where are we living? Um bup, 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 bup. But then it's got to know where it lives, and that's annoying. And if you're importing it from get, that's also not going to work. All right, we'll do depths. Depths.htp command. And then that's going to be. where I've got a copy. HTTP command comes with dialogue, so you can just do a bracket get. Um, yep, remove double quotes. So I can just literally do get HTTP command in 18.2, and that will bring it into the current namespace. But if I'm going to later import this tool and then run it, that would be annoying to have to do every time. So let's add that to our repository so that if we look in GHTML tables, we've now got a folder called depths and an APL array which just contains that dependency. This is honestly, I don't think this is the best way to do it. Like I said, because I'm only doing it this way so that it's it's APL code, so therefore later imports will just have it. But um, really, it wants to be I don't know in the dialog config file, which is JSON five format. Doesn't matter. Let's just go with this for now. All right. So fetch. And the example I have is uh, for a workshop I'm doing, I want the table of Wimbledon Gentlemen Singles Champions. So that's our URL. So by default, um, only functions and operators and other things that come in the editor, scripted namespaces, etc. Uh, things that I actually edit in the editor, like I said, open the editor here, type some stuff, press escape, that gets added as text to uh, my source. But if I just define an inline thing like this, or if I define any sort of variables, then that I have to add that explicitly, like I did with the HTTP command one there. Anyway, so we're going to fetch that URL. Okay, if there's no HTTP command, then uh, again, there's not a fantastic canonical way of importing dependencies at the minute. I think something based on link. I think it's Tatan based on link, or Tatan works to well together with it. Anyway, this will do. Link is the sort of latest effort at um, APL sources text files. So I'm going to import depths.http command. Should we depths execute omega and then this can become a generic 
import function, which I might, yeah, I'll leave it here for now, but I could, um, I could refactor that out, but that's just, uh, yeah, load the dependency. Does that work? Nope. What? Mm. Firstly, what do you look like? Uh-huh. Oh, um, I need to specify where. This namespace, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I need to separate out this. Good. Then um, the response is HTTP command dot get our URL. And then if 200 is not equal to uh, r.http status, where it will do not match, then we will just take r.http status or http message and signal an error with the status code as the error code. Otherwise, we'll return the data. Boom. Okay, so then um, page is fetch URL. Uh, oh, right, otherwise do nothing. Or do you have to even? Mm. Oh, it does expect. So the quirk here that I'm working around is a defen will stop execution on the first line that's not an assignment, or if it's after I got away, but anyway. So this has to be an assignment, which means this has to return a result, right? There we go. So now we can view our page. Is it that big? Or have I killed it? Hmm. Oh, no. oh, there we go. It's just large. So there's our HTML page. Yeah, it is large, isn't it? It's a whole Wikipedia article. So I guess that makes sense. Right. Now we need, so now we've got the thing, we've got the, now we've got the page, let's get the tables. So we're gonna extract tables from the page. So let's initialize a function by opening in the editor, make it empty, and then I find it much easier to develop with. So it's a simple character vector that's an HTML page. I'm going to return nested vec of char vec which each one is HTML table and uh, probably gonna regex this I think so I'm pretty sure it's a table followed by anything um, <laughs> up until end table, which I might need to escape, we're going to look for that and return the match, making sure to not be greedy, because otherwise if there's multiple tables it will return a big old list of all the tables. Then uh, I think that's it. Let's just give it a go. So that's plausible. Where th there's one. Do I need to match multiple? There should be more than one here, I think. Well. Like I said at the beginning, this is why I can just take a look at what I did before. New lines. Really? Is this all in line? Mm. So it's going to be a table followed by, and I still Googled this 
Shall we try and see how I googled it? Because that can be useful, knowing what the Google foo was. And it was regex incl uh, include new line or match new line. Probably something like this. And then the stack overflow as you do. And it was this one here. Anything or new line, zero more of those. That's what this means. So it's anything or, oh, it's a group containing, maybe that's, anyway, a group containing anything or a new line, zero or more. Then escape this. What's that? Ooh, shape. Come on. Still just one. I swear. It's not that long. Hold on. What new lines do we have in here? Just UCS tens. But how I've done it before is apparently I'm removing uh Oh yeah, thanks Jeff. Um most APL content you've come across as code challenges. And to be fair, I did that for a long time. Um, but, you know, I I've, I've felt feel like this is killing two birds with one stone, right? If if this works out, or, you know, there'll be a tool that people can use to... Uh, apparently, this sounds kind of useful. I don't know how often I'd use it, although one example from literally last week made me want to do this. So I'm glad I started. Um, and then, yeah, seeing sort of how, how it develops as well. So yeah, thanks. Hope you hope you find this useful. Hope you find it interesting. Right, so there's our pattern. Use it to search. Now I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna normalize the Did I do anything else? If I normalize the new lines or I remove the quad UCS 10, the line feed characters. <gasps> Document mode. That's the other thing. So by default, quad S is going to sort of do your matches line by line. But actually, the thing I'm after spans multiple lines within the document. So actually, I need to change mode to D. And I might not even need to do the new line thing. Oh. Um, so now it's in document mode, it'll do matches across line, new lines instead of... Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. Um, so the main thing taking time there is, is printing out this giant box in right. 11, there's 11 tables probably, sounds plausible I don't know um, so let's just look at the first oh, really oh yeah the view user command doesn't like uh. so the first one is just all on one line somehow so what's up with that uh. oh uh, no now that's gonna take ages Oh no, because now it's going to, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. That's all of the tables in one thing, I don't want that. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Nothing's died. What's the second table look like? There we go. What's one that's more reasonable? Big boy, yeah. Country Championship, yeah. 
Sure, we'll go with it. Um, and again, what new lines are in there? Cortesius tens. That's okay, I guess. I want to get rid of them later anyway. Um, so I'll leave this out, even though it's in the, the code that I've pre-written. Um, but it looks like I'm grabbing the tables correctly without uh, without stripping line feeds, so I'll leave it for now. Right. So the next, so now we've got our tables, and um, in order to extract the content into a APL array, I could just keep. I mean, it's a terrible idea, but I could keep re regexing my way uh, to oblivion. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, I think there are some funny blog posts about like don't you know don't oh how do I pass HTML using regex and it's like don't um, but HTML is almost XML and we have a, a system function called XML oh and it's worked it's worked for this one look at that so what you get in quad XML is you get a depth vector on the left so the root is at depth zero, that's the, the table itself. And then it has a caption at depth one, then a table body, and then within the table body, one level deeper is a table row. Within that row is a header. And then you've got the content, if the tag has content, and then you've got your attributes, and then you've got some type information, but um, we're gonna just bring everything in as text for now. Uh, what is the type information stuff actually? I think it's something to do whether it's character or uh, something. Uh, oh right. Oh, so that could be useful to know whether it's an element, a child element, character data. Something else, something else, something else. Processing instruction markup. Yeah, we're gonna straight up ignore those. Might look at child element and character data, but not now, I don't think. What were those, two and three, what's five? What? Oh, it adds them up, right, I see. So it's an element with character data, that's one plus four is five. If it's a child element with character data, I guess that's six. Considering we've an element that's also a child element is three. Yeah. It's, how does it know it's? What does it? What does that mean? What does it mean? If it's the root, there are some definitions of the depth vector that say that a root is the child of itself or something like this. The root points to itself in terms of the graph, but I don't really know what. Anyway, I I was going to ignore those numbers anyway, so I'm going to stick with that. Um. But anyway, so that's nice, yep, so we can quad XML that. Oh my gosh. Huh. Maybe it's just a Wikipedia thing. So so when, <laughs> when I wrote this um, before doing this stream, uh, I, was use, I was using other tables of, as an example that um, quad XML didn't just work for. So maybe we'll come to that example later. We'll just keep going, pretending that it's working for now. Um, but I do know, I'm gonna call it tab. We, I do know there needs to be a, a cleaning step because on a lot of other web pages, um, each tab, yeah. And right now that's just going to return the argument. Um, yeah, because a lot of pages have 
HTML that's not valid XML, apparently Wikipedia is very good. So that's really nice. And then we have the XML, which is just what we're doing here. And then we'll have some function that converts it into a matrix, which is what we're going to look at now. So I'm going to start by just looking at the first and then if it works for the first, hopefully it should work for all of them. So what's the idea? What's the big idea? Um, might be easier to split things into the depth, element, content, attributes, and uh, what's it called? Type or something. So now we've got these as vectors, which might be easier to handle. And the idea is to somehow compute what we reckon the shape should be. Which we're gonna it's gonna be rectangular. That's an interesting edge case. Again, I don't think I'll address it today, which is um HTML tables. I think you know for a given row you can have as many elements as you want, so it doesn't necessarily need to be defined rectangularly. Um but hopefully that's not gonna matter for today. Anyway, so what's this then? The shape will be number of co number of rows by number of columns. The number of rows is going to be the number of table rows. Right, so if we literally just get the elements, find out where the table rows are. Then that's the rows. Columns. I remember what I actually did here. Might have to go look again. Columns, I think, was I was getting whatever the table row is. If you find the depths, then you want the table data. Table data is between those. This might not be the way to do it, but I'll give it a go. Now we could do a partition sum, maybe. Right, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. See if I can make it work, and then I'll go look at what I did last time and compare the two. So I'm going to go look in apple cart for partitioned sum first. And it's the sum of each sub vector indicated by AV. So that's this one. And it's the table rows summing up how many table data are there. It says there's one but there are some that are missing and under the assumption they're all the same we'll find the maximum. I'm not hugely keen on this idea that the... well I need to consider the depth maybe. I'm not hugely convinced that there's one well, I guess we can check the Wikipedia. Um, the first table. Oh, is this it? Location venue. This is a table, is it? Is that why? Location London, United Kingdom. Oh. Still makes me feel like there's probably two columns rather than one. Because it's a table heading and then a table data. <laughs> right. 
Right, that's an open question, I think. Should calls include table header? Because if we say it's table data or a table header, then the shape is n by 2, rows by 2. It's like, do I go for what I think is the more general one now and then get bitten later when the table header means something different somewhere else? Or do I go for the simple one now and it's a potentially easy extension later? Yeah, let's go for that. Now, interestingly, I got this straight from Apple Cart. The shape is the calls and the rows. The con the values are the content. within each table data or table header apparently but we're sticking with table data for now so if we mix the content and the table data None of these tags None of these table datas directly Oh yes they do, it's gentleman single trophy Contain content But What we really want to do is for every one of these, we just want to grab everything at the same depth, I think. Depth. Or depth or lower. This is a table data. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, right. So you want the table data. Uh, you want the table data four, four, four. think all right um, I've been on this stage long enough that I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and look at what I did last time uh, no come on you can think your way through this you did it before it's the table data uh, with three three fifteen three three. With the depth less than here's the depth where it's less than the rest of the depths. And
don't know whether um so so we can get a mask that sort of well you don't want to alternate you don't want to alternate You could, uh, don't like this. Wear power neg one, rank zero wear. Each, comma each. Uh, mix that. It's not fantastic. Again, I'll see what I did before later. Um, but the idea is here now we have cascading set of indices. What I want is one 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 like that. So I can use those to select all of the content within a table data. All right, let's see what I did. Um, getting a bit stuck here. Right, so under we're in XML two map. Oh wow. Sure. Okay, so I did just the shape is uh, yeah, I forgot to add the sum on the rows there. But um, table row columns by table data for now. Ooh, I did a, what I think is a much uglier way of finding the number of columns. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's all right. I did the locations of the table rows interval index with the locations of the table data. then count unique ones well I'll just find the maximum there um, versus this one here which I got from apple cart and I think does the same thing um, let's see which is faster so here's what I did last time, and here's the one from Apple Cart, which ought to be, I would guess it's faster, yeah, significantly, um, mainly because we're just doing less work overall, we're keeping uh, boolean vectors boolean instead of converting them into integer arrays of indices and then we're doing a bunch of uh, simple operations on booleans you know we have a use of key on the left there which is going to be expensive relatively speaking so cool got to speed up for nothing oh lord okay so how I found the values is apparently fairly involved so Where did I get indices? Okay. 
So I've also, on top of having the depth, each element, the content, attributes, and the type, I also have the indices. And then I basically get um, where Uh, the locations of our table data, find the indices, and what's likely to be, it's going to be a lot of rows, and find them where they're less than, oh. Ugh, is this the best way of doing this? <laughs> I don't know. Anyone uh, anyone checking us out can find us a, a, a nicer way, I reckon. Um, but apparently this is where I did. So two not equals slash right tack. This is where I obtained these kind of masks and I had to take the first piece and catenate that on. Oh, onto the bottom, catenated by. Doesn't seem right either. Is that the same as, ah. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, all right. No, not equivalent. So where are indices are less than or equal to the locations of our table data is kind of where that table data is and beyond and then do a little bit of voodoo to take to create these masks and then do a selection on the content using this so firstly look for non-empty content now that i'm seeing this i feel like my last approach with the where power neg one each comma each where we have table data and mixing this might actually be faster um, how to replicate or oh, how do we get how do we fill them up with ones easiest the easiest way because interval index Ooh. don't know doesn't matter um yeah i can leave this as a comment Well, okay. Firstly, they'll have the same results. Or, sorry, they'll have different results, but if if this little each thing that I came up with a minute ago is slower already anyway, without even getting to the final result, then clearly what I did before is probably better. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, ignore that. Ignore that, let's just do what I did last time. Cool, all right, so what we do, what we're doing is we find the, we get a Boolean vector where one indicates there's a table data element. We find the table row elements. Then we use that to do like a partition sum that says between each 
table row, how many table datas are there? Find the maximum of those, and that's our column count, which is this. Whatever. Count of TDs within each TR. This we generalize later. All right. to decide later that is not a faster approach shape done values back on values so to extract the values out find the in we got the indices of the table data we can factor that out later produce this matrix of masks and make sure that's masks only for uh, content that has stuff in it. If it's empty, let's just leave it out. Then we're going to get the content compressed rank one by this and close the top because um, they'll have different lengths. And then uh, what? It's not great. What well, fifty-three events open error surface? See, that's going to be a tag, you know. Open error. Yeah, so that's a link, right? Right now, I'm not passing links. Um, it's just beyond the scope of what I'm doing right now. It's a possible extension. But if we mix, I think yeah, what I'm. Uh, resolving to do for right now it is debatable it is arguable that I should leave everything nested here and not mix into matrices uh, even though it will make the output cleaner it's just not right is it okay we'll leave it mixed for now so these are the values and I'm pretty sure that's it I think do we just now we should take the values we shape by oh no the shape it's going to reshape the values but we have to make sure to just overtake if we need some extra stuff. Uh, is that the number of columns? Mm, let's see how we do. Crap. Oh, idiot. So in theory, this is the table. You know, okay. Um, bu 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 bu. Let's see, what variables do we have in here? We've got T, which is 11 tables. So let's view uh, XML to mat. Uh, what? Let's look at the functions. <laughs> Hmm. So pick T. Does it extract tables? Does the XML? I was doing everything. Oh right, yeah, okay. Fine. Extract tables each table, or does it present all of them? No, this takes the whole HTML page. And return the HTML table. Oh, so this is doing too much. Dingus. 
So really, it's a function called get all. Just going to do all these bits. Is it deepen or no? Deepen or no? Deepen or no? Fine. It's all deepens. Uh, it's technically a little bit more advisable to, I think, use tradfins for if you're accessing external data, um, especially when you're debugging. I think there are weirdnesses if you're like suspended on the stack and you then you want to fix an issue and you edit some code and then you move on to the next iteration within an each and then it you sort of lose those changes because those weren't the version you, you're not you're editing like a temporary version of the function that's on the call stack rather than editing the source or whatever um but i don't i don't have enough experience to say whether that's really a problem in practice or not anyway so we're almost there um I think, apart from the cleaning, there might be a ball ache. We'll see. So we're writing a tool that's going to go, you give it a URL full of HTML tables, and it's going to extract each of those HTML tables into a nested matrix. And right now, it's just like simply taking table rows is the table rows, and it's only table data that we count for the columns, which is why this table here which corresponds to the kind of menu table here has only got one column because these aren't actually table data, these are table headings and it's debatable whether right now I want to mess around with that. Technically that's an each. Uh, so the first thing we do is... Oh right, yeah, so that's another thing that's not going to be in there, is it? Okay. So the tables is extract tables uh, page. And the page is you fetch omega. And the clean version is you clean the tables, but we don't do that yet. That's just a problem I know is going to come up. And yep, yeah, and then return all the matrices. Cool. So we're going to. Gonna get all the tables from this URL. Right, and then we're gonna XML to mat the fourth table. 56 by 6. Let's take a look. Interesting. So that I think these are like white space characters that I'm tempted to get rid of. 1968 Ozrod Lava. Here we are. One, two, three, four, five, six columns. So, you know, not bad. Very much does the job in some sense. You can see why it's tempting to pull out, you know, pull out what's there. Um or mix it, or somehow make the text contents flat. But whether you mix it, or you enlist, everything is going to have an advantage and a disadvantage. I mean, this is ultimately the curse that's part of the reason why these sorts of tools don't exist and be widely used, because well, I guess in some other frameworks, maybe they handle this by saying you get what you get and then, you know, deal with it. Like, we made some decisions. People doing data processing, you know, there's so many caveats about how you want to handle you know, extra blanks, new lines, whatever, um, what the structure should be. Should I pass this out into a list or whatever and I guess that's up to the person uh, dealing with it I think this is reasonable right to say you get a nested vector or so you get a nested matrix everything inside is um, a nested vector it looks like of all of the contents within a table data element okay 
So that's it, Tulio done. Um, I'm gonna commit this and then I'm gonna look for the last 10 minutes about um, getting some dirtier examples. And I should probably write some docs. Huh? Let's take this and there's a readme here. Uh, how do you use this? Um, argument is a simple Charvec, which is the vector URL. return a nested vector of nested matrices. Each matrix contains data from HTML tables uh, fetched from the URL. Something like this. And I guess we can do an example or something. And again, later this can be extended to have parameters and options and things like that, whatever people want, find is useful. For now it just does the job. So this is to say there's the URL and we do like the five take each get all like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, five max shape back compose. Ooh. Which was the least? Well, it was the least. Sorry. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. Actually, you don't even need that. Let's just say, let's just say it's the five take four pick. There we go. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's HTML tables dot. That's all. Make that a bit more easier to read. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, all right. Um, Import tables from clean HTML valid XML. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what's the remote? Oh, God, is this a fork? No, I'm doing it directly. All right, naughty boy. Um, that's fine because. There's nothing in there yet, but in the future, I think I'm supposed to fork. I guess I own it, but I think I'm supposed to. Forking is disabled. Whatever, that doesn't matter then. Right, now, what do I say about dirty tables? I have some examples. If I go to the current one and I go to the get all there. This might be something I have to come back to. So, for example, if I grab the, if I try to get the tables for 
Um, the user meeting coming up in two weeks. Dialogue user meeting, I think. Yeah, things go wrong, huh? Oh wow, we got as far as XML. What's going? On? What have I done differently? Where I'm getting valid XML for everything. It's weird, huh? Oh, I get nothing. Uh, hello. Nothing. Do I have a page? Okay, I have a page at least. Something weird with new lines there. Kinda gotta go, kinda gotta go. Let's just... Let's just take a look. So presumably there's no, th well, there's no table. I know that clean table doesn't do anything. So extract tables isn't working. Ah, maybe this was it. Nothing there. Hmm. Omega, Omega contains what kind of new lines? Both. And lo and behold, I think that's me that messes up the regular expression processing. So normalize, we normalize new lines for dialog. Of course there would be a reason. There we go. Yeah, there's six tables. And it still eats it though. Whoa. I thought I'd had to do more. Maybe I'll just delete the cleaning part clearly done something better with my regex. So let's, uh, let's uh, go back here. Okay, Maybe I have to view them. And we'll compare with the program. Which is to say, um, that's prob that's probably supposed to have content. Oops. Yeah, I'll come back to this another time to figure out what's up here. But that's clearly supposed to have content, and there's nothing there. Mir miraculously, though, all the other stuff is just there. So that's kind of cool. And I guess it was this example and something else I was doing last time that I think prompted me to mix these. But that's not you don't really want that. You want it like this nested. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Jobs are good, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the. <laughs> let's scrap all the stuff about cleaning. Then apparently we don't need it. No idea. Slightly interested to see what I did differently here. Um. So if we take a look. Fetch and extract tables. It's not that one. It's before then. So the pattern's like the same. Because it would have been here. Oop, here. Where the problem arises. Make the table, nothing. I pretty much copied this straight. Oh, is it that why? Maybe. Mm. The extra and anything. And then anything or new lines. And I've just got the anything or new lines. But other than that. Load D, greedy, not. Other than that, it's identical. I was getting like loose end div tags or something. I mean, maybe this will be something that comes up. Um,
you know, maybe this will be something that comes up in in the future. Try to use this one time, get a, a whatever called XML error. Can't remember what they're called. Domain error. And it tells you like what's wrong with the XML. If we get that in the future, I can look into trying to clean the, the approach. I mean, that was where all the meat of this was, to be honest. Can we double click these? No. And that was, let's find it. Um, it was loads of stuff to do with, this might be difficult to read. Sorry, I'm, I'm finishing stream in a second because I've clearly done it. Um, it was basically just taking all of the... Well, it turns out that a tag by itself is allowed, I think. But it was like if there was a stray closed tag. And I had to do all kinds of nonsense. To find, you know, a closing tag that doesn't have an equivalent opening tag before it. Or whatever. Um, but apparently I've not needed that this time. So, yeah. If there's any um, advice about like programming or writing in general, uh, do it twice, you know? <laughs> it's apparently just it's, it ends up cleaner and simpler and stuff. You solve it once, get it working, then start from scratch, almost. Uh, yeah, we need to expunge clean. Clean, clean, clean. Whatever I called it. Expunge clean table. And then that's gone now. I think that's it. No need to clean. Do 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 up to the main branch. So jobs are good and I'll try to remember. Um I'll try to remember, oh, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, so I'll have to let, add a little bit of docs here. But I'll try to remember uh, oh. mm. There we go. I don't think, think clear would do that for me, but anyway. Um, I'll try to remember, yeah, to stick, to go back after this ends, go to the description of this stream and add the, the relevant URLs to, or at least the link to the GitHub repo. The other thing I need to add to the readme is I'm hoping that you can just do... <sighs> okay, so I need to find out... Mm. I'll ask Adam in a bit to see why why this won't do it. I'm fairly sure if I take one of these and I try to get that. Oh, maybe it's because I'm suspended or something. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Didn't like that. Which one not found? Weird. Anyway, yeah, so the idea is you're supposed to be able to. For now, what do you do? I guess you've got to download it. Or does it need to have a source folder? Maybe. Hmm. Oh no, hold on. Keyboard. I'm pretty sure if you get this, do you get the dot dialog? No, the value error. Um, and what about 
this. Maybe I've got a broken version of, oh no, see, there's a thing. That's not a namespace, that is a, it's just a function. So it should work. It's possible that I need to pop a, um, yeah, pop it in a source folder rather than just loose in the repo. Um, and that would technically be better practice anyway for maintaining projects, but I leave it as it is for now. You know, I should also do like a release and uh, stuff like that. But I'll find out uh, a way so that you can just get it with get. Stick that in here. Oh, and it's done. Um, but that's it. That's a tool that, you know, grabs uh, grabs an HTML page from the internet, takes the data, takes the tables out, uh, and brings them into the workspace as a nested matrix. Um, thanks for ever seeing this. Hope you find it useful and or interesting. Um, I'll see you around.